Uh, welcome to the APNIC uh, members meeting. Should we give a few minutes? I think people are still at lunch or they've all gone shopping. Okay, uh, I think we'll uh, get started now. Um, welcome to the APNIC uh, 44 um, members meeting. Uh, the APNIC members meeting, uh, we do it twice a year at our uh, meetings, once during Apricot and once during the Northern Summer um, APNIC meeting. Um, we have a full agenda. Uh, for those of you who have been coming to APNIC meetings for a long time, I think uh, you realize that uh, rather than do this meeting on a Friday, uh, we've tried to compact it a bit more so that we get it uh, finished by uh, Thursday. Um, 
and taken out a lot of uh, reporting and other things out of the AMM. Um, we'd be very interested to hear some feedback at the dinner today uh, because this is the second time we've done this uh, where we have, um, you know, kind of compressed the AMM um, into one. Um, so I'll start with uh, introductions. I'm Gaurav Rajupada. i am been uh, selected as the chair of the executive council by my fellow executive council members. Um, today we have a full house, uh, but unfortunately one of our members, the secretary of the EC, Rajesh Sarya, had to leave um, due to an urgent uh, personal issue. He just left uh, he, I think he's, he just flew out of Taichung um, 10 minutes ago. So apologies for him. Um, and then I'll start with the far end. Uh, start with Jessica. If you can introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jessica Shen from, from China. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Kems. I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, I am Parhar. I am from India. Isumi Okutani from JP Nick. Kenny Huang from Taipei. And Paul Wilson from AP Nick. Thank you, Paul. Um, I, I actually don't, you know, I think during this week I've spoken enough times uh, that I don't have a lot to add right now. Uh, I'll get to speak for the rest of the day, so, you know, I'll get right into business um, and uh, ask Paul to start the AMM with the APNIC Secretariat Report. Thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Garrett. Thank you all for, uh, for being here. I've got an update about what's been happening at the Secretariat since the beginning of the year. That'll be followed by the financial and uh, various other reports. Um, in 20 minutes, I can't cover everything, so this is a, a snapshot, and um, you'll find a much more uh, comprehensive report uh, available in the um, in the general an annual reporting, of course, uh, towards the end of uh, for the end of the year uh, next year. So uh, this is uh, the report uh, for most of what's happened uh, since the beginning of 2017. We divide and report APNIC activities according to these three groups, uh, serving APNIC members, supporting regional internet development, and cooperating with the global internet community. And of course, behind that is a whole lot of, of what we call the corporate uh, organizational support work that, uh, that also happens. But I'll be reporting according to those three uh, sort of externally facing uh, strategic uh, directions of APNIC. Our membership has continued to grow uh, steadily not quite as fast this year as, uh, as it did in the last year, but uh, still at a healthy rate. So we expect to have, uh, by the end of the year, when we add all of, the all of the members and the members of NIRs, we expect to have close to 15,000 organisations being served by APNIC and just over um, 6,000, towards 6,500 of those are direct APNIC members. So that's quite a, quite a steady growth uh, over, the last, uh, over the last several years. A little bit slower this year, so we're moderating uh, projections for the coming year based on a slightly slower growth than, uh, than we'd had experienced at least last year. We report uh, the delegation activity for IPv6, IPv4, ASNs, etc. IPv6 is, uh, has slowed down just a little bit this year in terms of our projections. The red part that you see to the right there is the, just a numeric project, projection of the total to the end of the year uh, based on what we've uh, allocated up until the 1st of September. So you can see that um, East Asia last year uh, allocated many more IPv4 delegations. This is the count, the number of delegations themselves uh, than so far this year. So we'll see how it goes between now and the end of 2017. Likewise, IPv4 is slowing down, probably understandably, given the, the fact that we're in the final slash eight. A lot of APNIC uh, member organizations have received IP addresses already, and they're not allowed to come back for more. So 
where uh, we're expected this slowdown was expected eventually at the current rate of delegations we should have around 36 months worth of delegations left so please uh, bear that in mind that in uh, in about three years time there may be absolutely no more chance to get ipv4 for anyone from those final slash eight pools and you'll be back to the uh, the need uh, to get your v4 on the on the open market if you still need it hopefully you won't in three years time IPv4 transfers are uh, on their way up. These, uh, this is, again, the number of individual transfer transactions. So just around 250, just over 250 so far. Um, sorry, so far this year, just under 300, just under 200. We're, we're heading for about 275 for the, for the year when we project that forward. The total number of actual addresses transferred uh, fluctuates fairly rapidly. This, is, this uh, chart can be dominated simply by one or two very large transactions. So we haven't seen the, the very large transactions this year that we saw last year. So it's, at the moment it's, uh, it's down on last year, but um, that could go in any direction before the end of this year. Uh, ASNs are holding uh, fairly steady with around 900 ASNs delegated uh, or projected to be delegated by the end of this year. We're tracking uh, across the membership the proportion of members who have V4, V6, ASNs, or a combination of both, of all three. Uh, so we have, um, the one we're tracking closely is IPv6 holdings, and we've got a total of 55% of all members now holding IPv6 uh, allocations or IPv6 address space. Now moving on to a few services that are provided to members and to the public. Of course, uh, who is is, um, is the most important public service that APNIC provides to the entire internet. That is the registry of IPv4, IPv6 and other resource holdings. There's one uh, significant upgrade that is happening this year that uh, George Quo uh, reported on during the services session. George and his team, that is, and that is the fact that we're introducing the, the organisation object into who is, and that will allow organisations themselves to be individually represented and uniquely represented inside the, the who is database, making it easier to see what are the resources held by each individual organisation. And an individual organisation would, in most cases, of course, correspond directly and, and uniquely to an APNIC member organisation, uh, but also, in some cases, to non-members. And we've actually had a very uh, good... Uh, rate of response from members in updating their organisation details so that we can create the who is uh, organisation objects. 42% uh, of them, of you, of APNIC members in total, have uh, have updated their org objects, their organisation records, and org, therefore their org objects uh, just this year. And so that's that's a pretty good rate when you consider the uh, the large number of of members uh, concerned. As I say, 6,000 or so. And the chart here just shows um, the, the uh, popularity of that um, org object update process in, uh, in each of the economies that we serve. So some economies are already up to 100% of members having updated their objects, which is good to see. Now, who is is uh, accompanied these days by a new innovation at APNIC developed this year called Who Was? And that's the ability to provide um, to get access to not just the current who is objects, but all of the historical objects that might have existed prior to the changes that happen in the in the database. So that uh, is something that has been uh, deployed in a beta, beta mode. We've been working on the interface. Interestingly, it, it is also a standards-based uh, process, and behind that is an extension to the RDAP uh, registry data access protocol specification that we have taken to uh, to the IETF already. And what it looks like is this: you can actually see uh, this on uh, www.apnic.net slash who was. And it allows you to browse, given any object at all in the, in the database, it allows you to browse uh, through all of the updates that have happened to that, uh, to that object. It shows multiple objects on, screens, it, on screen. It shows the diff of uh, changes, additions, and, and uh, removals. And that's something that's been requested by people doing forensic work on, uh, on IP resources where they want to actually know what's happened uh, to, to the uh, holders of those resources over, over the past, recent or distant past. Okay, uh, moving on, RPKI is something that we're continuing to work on. Of course, it's a, it's a major transformation for our entire uh, community, so it's a slow process. 
but we've got our ready to row t-shirts. I've seen those around in the um, in the meeting rooms uh, so far this week. We're, we're running sessions to promote that and to give away t-shirts. Uh, so if you haven't seen one of those sessions and one's coming your way, then please, please attend. We've been to just this year to Philippines, Bhutan, uh, China, Indonesia, Cambodia, amongst, amongst others. We've got 785 uh, ROA-enabled uh, members these days. We've got, uh, in IPv4, just under 2% of all address space uh, that we've allocated uh, covered by ROAs, which is a pretty small quantity, I have to, I have to say. So we're trying to lift that, that rate of, uh, of ROA coverage, and we uh, really need your help to do that to make the Asia-Pacific look better in terms of our PKI compliance. The rate is even, uh, is even lower, well under 0.5% uh, for IPv6, so that's another one to look out for. In our infrastructure services, things that you don't necessarily see from the outside, our, um, our, our office and facilities network has been, has been upgraded fairly radically, including our uh, ability to access that by VPN from, from different uh, remote locations. We have, um, we're proud of the fact that we've migrated our office network to private address space uh, on IPv4, so we've liberated some uh, public blocks in order to just use private space like uh, most normal people do. We, we no longer have the privilege of public space on our desktops and, uh, and laptops in the office. We also have an IPv6 only Wi-Fi network which, uh, which most staff are able to use without any problems at all. So we've actually uh, documented some of these uh, things that we've done and, and posted them on the APNIC blog if you're interested to know how we've done uh, those tasks and, uh, and other related things around the office. Uh, network monitoring uh, is being improved all the time. Uh, remote sites are being, um, are being translated steadily over onto cloud-based uh, virtual service um, services. Uh, we're looking at, we've done that for some of the CCTLD secondaries that we carry and uh, val evaluating uh, Vulture for um, uh, APNIC reverse and forward zones as well. Uh, network security, stateful firewall is being, is being set up. Um, something that you will, I hope, you may have seen, you will have seen, I hope, is more technical outreach from the people who are doing this work behind the scenes. Our technical team are more often actually getting out and sharing what they do with members of the community. And we've heard, we've heard you ask for that, and that's happening more often uh, these days, and I hope, it's being, I hope it's something you've noticed and, uh, and found value in. Our online services, uh, my APNIC, of course, is something that is used by, by most or all APNIC members to access uh, APNIC services. We've, uh, added, we're adding the support for the org object uh, as one of the changes just in the recent past. The APNIC.net uh, site is now hosted uh, on WordPress in-house. We've um, upgraded IPv6 pages. We've provided better program design in our meeting website. Uh, APNIC.foundation. You'll hear a little more about the APNIC Foundation. Uh, if you haven't already this week, you will a little more today. Uh, and that's a, a website, of course, um, that, uh, that APNIC is carrying. Now, uh, moving on to the second, uh, supporting regional internet development. Uh, this, this is the second area of activities, as I mentioned earlier. The training and technical assistance activities are probably the most important and well-known of, uh, of what APNIC does under this banner. Uh, so far this year, 42 training sessions face-to-face -face in 29 locations covering or providing training to 1,375 trainees. We all also have a growing band of community trainers, uh, local trainers who are experts in their own uh, economies and, uh, and regions who, ha who have made themselves kindly available to APNIC so that we can call on them to help with trainings that happen around the region. So 14 of our courses uh, this year so far have been delivered with community trainers uh, in six locations. And that's something that uh, we will be growing uh, steadily uh, over time. E-learning as well, uh, 89 online sessions with 473 trainees. We've got YouTube videos. If you haven't seen them already, there's plenty of them there and they get a lot of views. And we've conducted 10 different direct hands-on technical assistance where uh, requested by APNIC members. We've updated our courses on IRM, IRM, that's Internet Resource Management, 
on internet routing registry, security, MPLS, and we have new course material on SDN and NFV, and we had a very popular SDN workshop that happened uh, here earlier uh, in the week, and it was great to see the interest that, uh, that was generated uh, in that new workshop. So thanks to everyone who came and attended. Very interested, as always, to hear your response, your views on how that, how that workshop went uh, for you. The APNIC Academy, APNIC.academy, uh, we're, we're um, using ICANN's new GTLDs here, so uh, it's a dot .academy website. That is a, a Moodle platform that was launched earlier this year. It's got free public access so anyone can register and undertake courses on that site. It's got two courses at the moment, one Introduction to Cyber, cyber Security, one uh, Internet Resource Management int Introductory course, and it's been pretty popular just since April we've had 1,300 uh, or so registrations and enrolments. It's also a platform which can provide certificate courses. So there have been 350 certificates issued to trainees who have passed the test. So it has online um, examination, of course, and if you, uh, if you get uh, the requisite uh, score in those tests, then you'll have a certificate. So that's pretty, pretty popular, and we're going to be bringing more training content on that. Uh, V4 and V6 routing is under development. We're also ha hoping to do more work on security and CERT related trainings. The first course actually was funded with support by JICA, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, who was interested to see a freely available course on cybersecurity. So we hope to have more external support for this kind of development uh, in future. Moving on to community activities. Uh, we attend NOGs around the region and we support them wherever we can. We've had 17 presentations at NOG meetings so far this year. We also send uh, member services staff who consult with members and provide host master support or membership support, technical support, sponsor sponsorship as well for NOGs around the region. There are other community activities as we call them. Uh, we're installing root servers uh, still this, uh, through this year. So far, just one server installed in Nepal, but we do have a budget for more servers, which are preferably installed in, uh, in neutral IX-type locations uh, in order to improve root service around the region. But one thing that we did uh, consider and, and decided to do this year after, after looking at sort of value for money in the root server deployment was to do some work with ISC, Internet Software Consortium, on BIND and sponsoring them to bring in what's called aggressive insect caching in BIND, something that Jeff Houston spoke about this week. Uh, RIPE Atlas, we work with our colleagues at RIPE NCC on deploying Atlas anchors and probes. We have a number of MOUs, uh, renewed and refreshed and, and new MOUs with different organisations around the region and the world. Uh, our community activities include fellowships and so we had 48 uh, fellows who joined us here for APNIC 44, and that's a really important part of what we do here to bring new, new participants into APNIC 44 and, and lend some assistance to people who, uh, who, may not, who may need some assistance, may not be able to get here to APNIC meetings otherwise. Uh, security is an increasing concern and priority for APNIC members. We find in the APNIC survey that uh, while IPv6 used to be the top priority for many or most APNIC members, these days security is the thing that people put even higher. So Adli Wahid uh, is our senior security uh, specialist, uh, recently joined by Jamie Gillespie, who's here with us in, um, in Taichung, somewhere here. Jamie? Hi, Jamie. Um, that's a good indication of the, the new priority that we're putting on security, uh, that we're building the team, we're uh, bringing security to the community wherever, wherever we can, bringing security, security expertise, uh, 20 NOG and CERT events, uh, different, other different security related events around the world, including things like Interpol, other CERT meetings, uh, ASEAN, uh, KISA in Korea. We helped with the Tonga CERT, which was established last year and just had its first birthday, but we provided training and support to the Tonga CERT, and that's being followed by more CERT activities, particularly in the Pacific, where, again, through the APNIC Foundation, a grant has been received to, uh, to provide more CERT support. The first organisation, we've got an MOU. Adli Wahid has been re-elected uh, to the board, uh, and between Adley James and guest, guest uh, contributors, we've had uh, 34 blog posts on security topics this year. IPv6, 
Uh, it's a popular topic still, popular with training, 15 face-to-face -face trainings and 450 trainees, 13, uh, 15 e-learning sessions, nearly 100 trainees, uh, eight presentations at different events. Uh, World IPv6 Day is the 6th of June, the 6th of the 6th, and we work pretty hard with uh, the other RARs to promote IPv6 uptake uh, on that day, as we do every year. We're still working with ITU uh, at least twice a year on, on a joint IPv6 infrastructure security uh, workshop. That was in um, Bhutan and in Thailand uh, this year. New web pages, as I, as I mentioned, many new posts on the APNIC blog about uh, IPv6. And we've seen some pretty good growth in IPv6 uh, this year. So our members are holding IPv6 have, have gone from 50 to 55%. That's not bad growth. Uh, but of course, you need to do more than just hold IPv6 addresses. You need to use them. And uh, it's fantastic that, that our overall regional capability uh, for IPv6, that's measured by APNIC labs at the end user level, that's grown from 7.5 to 16.5% just since the beginning of the year. So that's a, that's a fantastic rate of growth and it, it really shows, I think, that IPv6 is, it's got, it's got still quite some way to go, but it really is on a growth path at the moment, which, uh, which I think is, is very good to see for those of us who've been um, talking about IPv6 for so long now. And one of the ways we talk about IPv6, as I mentioned, is through the blog. So uh, Tony Smith and his team have, uh, have been working hard on this blog for quite some time now and it's, uh, it's really also paying off in terms of becoming a really good channel for getting information from APNIC out to the, to the community at large, but also enrolling and encouraging support from others. So we've got nearly 100 guest bloggers who've provided content uh, to, onto the APNIC uh, blog, and that's a fantastic way. If any of you have got some information you'd like to share, then please uh, talk to Tony and consider uh, becoming a guest blogger. APNIC Labs, uh, I mentioned the IPv6 uh, capability measurements. That's the graph. Uh, for Asia um, as of today, uh, showing how the, the, cl the climb in the, the end user capability for the entire Asia Pacific. But uh, Jeff, uh, George, uh, also Joao Damas, who's, who's joined with APNIC Labs, uh, they've been busy as usual. Uh, there's 19 articles uh, from Labs on the Blabs, uh, APNIC Labs blog, um, and on the APNIC blog. Uh, a lot of presentations around different industry events and working currently on some pretty important research topics, the DNSSEC uh, key signing, key rollover, something we've been help working with ICANN and other RARs on. Jeff's work on large MTUs on, uh, and IPv6. Uh, interesting topics like, like uh, latent quick capability and the dynamic behavior of BBR. And I had to look up BBR, I have to admit, before um, presenting this presentation to you. It means ball bouncing robot or something like that. Uh, Jeff also serves on the uh, ICANN uh, Security and Stability Advisory Committee. The APNIC Foundation I mentioned uh, a couple of times already, that has been kicked off this year as an incorporated non-profit organisation in Hong Kong. Uh, Duncan McIntosh, Sylvia Cadena are now full-time staff seconded from APNIC to the foundation. We've got three new board members selected for the foundation, uh, listed here, Edward Tian, Sharad Sangi, and Sylvia Sumalan, very well qualified, uh, highly esteemed, I have to say, people who've agreed to lend their time to the foundation. And so that's uh, kicked off to a very strong start this year. Just uh, racing through a few final activities under cooperation with the global community. Global engagement happens, uh, well our engagement ha is not resti restricted just to the Asia-Pacific region. Uh, we get around to events like FIRST, uh, GSMA, ITU meetings, uh, there's the GFCE, there's, uh, there have been uh, meetings with APECTEL in different parts of the world, uh, the work with ICAO and DNSSEC, uh, key signing key. We've been working uh, with AP, regional, IGF and schools of internet governance around the region and also working with other uh, I organisations, ICANN, ISOC, and uh, .Asia, on um, on coordinating how we're going to how we provide support to those, um, in particular, the schools of internet governance through something called APASA, the Asia Pacific uh, Association of Schools and Academies. I think 
Okay, um, RAR collaboration, we're, we're very actively, as usual, working with other RARs. We, um, we negotiated and, and agreed on that RDAP extension protocol that I mentioned before, working on the key signing, key rollover, which is underway at the moment. The Seed Alliance is a, now a foundation project for, of small research and grant, uh, research and development grant programs, which uh, is between APNIC, AFRINIC and LACNIC. The ASO review, which you have heard about and will hear a little more about, uh, the World IPv6 launch, a joint uh, meeting between the APNIC EC and the AFRINIC board that happened in, uh, in Nairobi during Af AFRINIC 26. And we have quite a number of coordination groups with the other RIRs in engineering, registry, communications, uh, finance, HR and legal. I think you all know about the next conference. Uh, the next uh, APNIC conference will be APNIC 45, uh, held as part of the Apricot 2018 Summit in Kathmandu. And uh, that, I think, is uh, something which we're all looking forward to very much, uh, 19th to 28th of February. Later on, now, you'll be hearing a little more about this later on, but you know that uh, we will be meeting in a year's time in Numea, in New Caledonia. Uh, there we have some... Uh, uh, Nice uh, large team of colleagues from Numea who are here and we'll hear a little bit more. Uh, welcome to you all. We'll hear a little bit more about that meeting before the end of the day. Uh, likewise, as you heard uh, on the social opening social evening, Apricot 2019 in 18 months time will be in uh, Republic of Korea. So please uh, stay in touch uh, with APNIC via our social network uh, links. Um, Hopefully this has given you a good overview of what's happened in this year, but there's more to come. Uh, thank you very much. Go back to the now there was, there was something uh, I wanted to uh, start off with. I just had to, to uh, defer these slides um, for a, a reason that will become uh, clear. Uh, normally, this, these reports really start off, they, they talk about what APNIC is and what we do, um, what we're doing now and in the future. Uh, the APNIC mission is a, a global, stable and secure internet that serves the entire Asia-Pacific community. We don't normally talk about the past, but I just wanted to touch on where APNIC came from, because we've been around for quite a while. I dug up uh, some old slides that I used to, I used to trot out uh, for quite, a, quite a while ago now to explain a bit about the history of... Um, of APNIC. Um, this goes back a long way because back in uh, back in 1981, when the when the internet was um, was was very very tiny indeed. In 1981, they were already up to RFC number 790. But uh, back in 81, uh, RFC 790 s uh, told you how informal the registry system was back then because what that RFC said uh, about how to get, um, how to access IANA services or how to get allocations was, it said the assignment of numbers is handled by John. If you're developing a protocol, application or application that will require a link, socket, port, etc., please contact John to receive a number assignment. That is how APNIC, the precursors of APNIC um, were able to run um, IP address and, and other uh, registration functions way back in 1981. Now things came along uh, quite a, at quite a rapid pace since then, but it took uh, 10 years until 1992 for there to become a kind of a new age in this, um, this registry function. So it was actually uh, in 1992 there was an RFC called uh, RFC 1366. And by that point uh, the, the internet had really started growing and the load on John had grown beyond what was really reasonable and probably beyond what was expected by the rest of the world as well. And so what uh, this RFC said was that um, based on the growth and the maturity of the internet in Europe, cent Central South America and the Pacific Rim areas, it is desirable to consider delegating the registration function to an organisation in each of those geographic areas. And so that happened. 1992 we had RIPE NCC start. 1993 we had APNIC start. It was all kicked off by, by that uh, RFC. The author of that, that RFC uh, is with us here. So we've heard about, we've heard about Elise um, this week already, but I just really wanted to 
I really wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge that we would not be here at all if not for what happened way back there, then um, 1993 and, and thereabouts. So I wanted to say uh, to Elise, um, really, thank you very much for everything you've done. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Elise. Uh, we always remember where we came from. Um, and I hope uh, we'll see Elise uh, around in the community, um, contributing again um, uh, with a long expertise and experience. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll move on to the APNIC uh, EC Treasurer report now, and Kenny will do the honors. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Kenny Huang, APNIC Treasurer. It is my great pleasure to give you the treasure report on behalf of APNIC. Okay, the basic treasure report was two parts. The first part is year to date until end of June 2020, uh, 2017 financial report. The second part is activity report. So we go to the first one. So let's uh, summarize what's going on until the end of June this year. And uh, basically, we have new membership below the budget by uh, 87. That's considered will be 16.1%. And revenue below the budget by uh, 192,000. And that's considered 1.8%. Uh, Expense below the budget by uh, 751,000. And surplus above the budget by 559,000. Uh, so financial stability measure at uh, 15.79 months by our operating expense. So I will give in uh, some detail below. So starting from operation surplus, right now, uh, full year forecast surplus is uh, 657,000, uh, and uh, we have about 265,000 less than budget. That's why, uh, because we have. Uh, more anticipate on the budget, and because we have uh, budgeted more membership, but actually, reality, the membership web didn't reach to our anticipation. So here, explain some detail. For example, like uh, we were budget about 540 uh, uh, new membership, but actually, uh, until end of June, we only reached to 400, uh, 453 new members. And also, we have budget accommodate for the budget for uh, less development country is about 10%. But actually, uh, until the end of June, the less than, uh, we have 22.5% uh, 22 from less development country. Uh, that's why uh, our budget was not grow as, a, as we anticipated last time. So let's the membership grow uh, from, uh, actually, our membership was keep growing. We can see the next, next chart. Uh, we still, our membership still remains strong. All the membership keep growing. A majority membership concentrate on a very small, a small membership and very small membership. Uh, we are uh, very, uh, we have small among very small among our member from associate member, and but majority of the member will come from small and very small membership. Okay, here introduce uh, statement of income regarding to the expense. So. Uh, until end of June, year 2017, we were 751,000 below the budget. Uh, that's the major reason, because uh, some last of middle of the year, uh, some of the expense uh, will be consumed and by, by before the end of year. But however, we still anticipate, focus to be below the budget as we anticipate is by 172,000, about 1% below the budget until the end of this year. So capital expenditure and uh, sorry, capital expenditure. We still have because we have off, we see the major difference will be the furniture and fitting because uh, everything office we have more 
uh, we have new stuff, and we try to uh, accommodate the space we, uh, within our uh, within APN building. So we just refurniture and 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 try to structure the, the fitting for the member, so uh, for the staff. So the major difference will be in Capex. We're going to the uh, furniture and fittings. So regarding to statement of financial report, basically, as I mentioned, our APNIC financial steer remains strong. We have about 2% from our portfolio account, and that's a portfolio asset. I give in some detail. So you can see the uh, APNIC reserve, as I mentioned, APNIC financial remains strong. And APNIC reserve, major, re uh, major contribution come from financial assets. You can see the yellow color. Uh, most of them are financial assets that come from credit Suisse portfolio account. And we also blue color stand for the cash. And you can see APNIC cash keep growing. And also some portion was from property. And eventually property, APNIC property just only a very uh, small portion of our total asset. And we will review the APNIC total asset from time to time. And if uh, we have still more uh, cash, we will try to, to transfer to, to the uh, portfolio account to maximize uh, APNIC outcome for the, from a financial. So the financial stability remain until end of this. Uh, we focus until end to the uh, year to date, uh, last end of June this year, is uh, 15 point 70, uh, 79 months. That means the number of months of expense will be covered by equity. Uh, we, uh, EC has been set up a strategic goal to set up target at 80 months of operating expense. And we're still almost there for the last couple of years. And we try to work harder, try to reach the original goal, and it should be uh, achievable. Okay, second part of the financial report is activity reporting. Uh, as you probably aware, we classify and we, uh, we try to split all the financial into four kind of uh, activity. So we have split. Uh, spread the four kind of activity code. Uh, one is uh, serving the member and also regional operation, uh, regional uh, development, and also global cooperation, and also corporate. Uh, here's how APNIC spends by different kind of activity. You can see uh, the uh, most of the spends go to serving the members. And uh, you can see the red color and blue color. Red color means lovely budget, and blue color is actual expense. And pretty much the actual expense is very close, very consistent to the to the Huawei budget. So also just in different projections to see um, uh, year to until end of June, year 2017, the financial expense by different kind of activity. And we have corporate, uh, global, uh, global cooperation and regional development, and also corporate uh, total expense. You can see from the detail here. And also we have uh, CAPEX, capital expenditure by activity, depends on uh, acti activity, activity code uh, classified as a corporate or a global corporation, regional development, and, uh, and serving the members. So uh, basically, that's pretty much summarize the financial report. And if you want to see the detailed report, you can go to APNIC website, apnic.net slash about us slash transparency, and you can see the all the detailed financial report, and you can get the detailed information from there. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Any question? Thank okay, thank you. Thank you, Kenny. We, we'll have uh, time for Q&A again uh, during the open mic. Uh, next, actually it's me, uh, doing the APNIC EC report. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sonny. Um, this will be a very, very quick report. Uh, what I would like to highlight is uh, the APNIC EC um, meeting minutes are actually on the website. Uh, and so you can go and get a lot more detailed information about our deliberations and decisions uh, by uh, reading those minutes. Um, uh, we have uh, eight. Uh, EC members, uh, seven, seven of us are elected by the membership. Uh, Paul is the ex-officio DZ of APNIC. 
um, and so is ex officio on the APNIC EC. Uh, the APNIC EC functions as a representatives of the community and also has the dual role of being the board of the APNIC PTY LTD. The APNIC uh, EC main functions are to represent the interest of members in the governance of the APNIC, um, oversight of APNIC activities, um, and by APNIC, it means the APNIC uh, Secretariat. Um, consider uh, larger policy issues around internet uh, addressing infrastructure, support for internet growth in the region, um, and you know related uh, issues, uh, so that it aligns with uh, APNIC's uh, strategic uh, direction and priorities. Um, the other important thing, obviously, is the EC is responsible for setting fees. Um, and then we are also responsible for endorsing the policy consensus towards implementation. Uh, one of the really uh, important thing to realize is that APNIC EC is both the representatives of the member, membership uh, and the community, um, and at, while at the same time is also responsible for a smooth functioning of our secretariat. So we try to balance that two roles um, while working on uh, setting priorities and so on and so forth. Um, and in doing so, we meet four times a year, face to face. Um, we have had three face-to-face uh, -face meetings uh, since APNIC 43. Uh, we meet twice a year at APNIC meetings and twice a year outside of the APNIC meetings. Uh, generally in uh, December, we always meet in the APNIC Secretariat in Brisbane, uh, which is generally two days, two and a half days, uh, mostly discussing strategic priorities and budgets for the next year. Um, during our May, June summer meeting, we try to do more global outreach and try to see if we have joint board meetings with other RIRs or go to NOGS or you know travel within the region. Um, we recently had our first joint meeting with Afrinic Board in June. Uh, we've had a, quite a few um, joint board meeting with RIPE, um, but we finally achieved our goal of doing a board meeting with Afrinic. Um, and as I said earlier, all of the meeting minutes, the attendance records, the discussions are uh, available on the website on uh, apnic.net slash uh, forward slash ec. Uh, we've had perfect attendance record this year so far. Um, thank you to all my EC members. Um, in terms of high-level uh, goals and setting priorities, uh, you know, you might think, when will you stop talking about the survey? Uh, but this is one of the most important ways in which we get feedback from our members. It is done every two years. Um, so which means that as soon as one survey ends, we start looking at the next survey process. So we've just started uh, the process to run the survey next year. Um, we had the last survey in 2016, and we've taken those recommendations, and the recommendations from the 2016 survey uh, will basically be imported into the budget uh, making um, or budgeting for next year, and so on. So this is a continuous uh, feedback loop, and Please participate. It is the most important way in which you can influence the further uh, direction of APNIC. So you, you'll start seeing emails. Uh, we'll start a focus group uh, at the end of January in 2018. And, you know, uh, we'll be different countries and focus groups. And then the survey will happen sometime around June or uh, July. And then we'll present the survey next year uh, in Numia. Finances. Uh, Kenny just did the presentation. Uh, so you can go and look at that. We still have a fairly healthy reserve, and the revenue has not gone down. But we did. Uh, we are starting to see our membership growth uh, play to out um, gradually. Um, as of 31st August, we had 6,360 members. Um, we are still trying to beat ripe. Uh, hopefully, we will. Uh, we are seeing quite a bit of growth from LDCs, um, markets. Um, and, you know, if you go to stats.apnic.net, there's a huge amount of data that you can look at on our address allocations. I know that in the services working group, uh, high-level data is presented. But if you want to go dig deeper, 
of allocations of v4, v6, ASNs, then stats.apnic.net uh, um, has a lot of data. Uh, please go and look at those. Uh, gives you a better idea of how the uh, resources are being distributed in the region. Um, as I said, the expenses uh, continue to track below budget. Uh, again, refer to the budget presentation earlier. And we've started discussing the budget and activity planning for 2018. And we'll conclude those discussions in December. And the budget will get approved uh, for next year in December. Uh, this is a new item. Uh, for a few years now, uh, the APNIC EC has been in consultation about ways of uh, reaching uh, our members or reaching new members, let's say, in different parts of our region. Um, we are a very, very diverse region. Um, somebody was telling me earlier that in India there are 28 official languages. And I was like, only 28? Because in Nepal, with like 10% of the population, we, I think, have 16 now. Um, Uh, so, you know, um, some of those, and then we've also seen um, feedback in surveys saying they would, members would like to have uh, easier, closer contacts and so on. So, <coughs> after spending around two years on this topic, uh, we've uh, developed a new service partner model. Uh, we have decided to do a limited trial in selected economies. Uh, we've asked the secretary to work on that. Um, some of the details are in the minutes, as I said earlier. Uh, some of these we are still working through the legal and administrative processes. And uh, you'll hear more about it next year uh, at the APRICOT meeting, uh, where we hope to have a much, much devolved uh, model uh, that can be made public. APNIC Foundation, uh, Paul uh, gave a quick update earlier. Um, we now have three board members appointed who have uh, gracefully accepted our uh, request to be on the foundation board. We have Mr. Edward uh, Tian from China, Ms. Uh, Sylvia Sumerlin from Indonesia, and Mr. Sharath Sangi from India on the APNIC foundation board. Uh, they were appointed on the 31st of August. Um, is that right? Okay, so, okay, the lawyer is saying no. So, uh, but they have accepted our um, uh, proposal, and we soon hope to complete the paperwork to have them uh, fully on the board. Uh, we have uh, two staff members seconded or from APNIC Secretariat, uh, Duncan and Sylvia, and the website is apnic.foundation, new GTLD, at least getting used somewhere. Uh, we have already received funding from the Canadian and Australian governments, as well as the Internet Society, and you've probably seen the new brochure outside. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, the ISIF program and as well as the Internet Operations Grant, and all of those programs are now uh, transferred to the APNIC Foundation. So they actually have work to do immediately, uh, even to continue with the programs we already had in place. Collaboration with APRICOT, as you know, uh, you know, APNIC and Ap APRICOT, kind of uh, very, very long relationship. Uh, symbiotic, um, APRICOT Summit, as uh, they are legally known now. Um, we always host our meetings there. Um, APRICOT is a much larger community. Um, we have had a MOU with uh, APRICOT for a long time, uh, which uh, kind of expired last year. So we renewed it, um, signing a new MOU. Uh, the MOU should be on the websites of both organizations very soon. Uh, because we just signed it earlier this week. Um, and, you know, it basically, few things there, it cements uh, the relationship between the two organizations going into future. And this time we made sure that it actually does not expire um, after a few years. It's a permanent uh, MOU. Again, uh, member feedback. We welcome comments, suggestions, questions from our members. Um, and as I said, we are community representatives. You just don't have to be a member. Uh, if you are a member of our community from the region, out of region, um, 
please uh, give us feedback. Uh, multiple ways to do the feedback. Uh, if you are a member, uh, there is a submission to the EC in my APNIC. Um, of course, I hope you enjoyed the drinks last night at Meet the EC. Uh, but even otherwise, you can always uh, come and talk to us uh, during the meeting or at any other meetings uh, that we are at. Um, and obviously, you can go to apnic.net slash EC and email us or, you know, um, well, actually, out of the meetings, you do have to email us. Uh, our phone numbers are not there, but you know, I'm happy to give my WhatsApp number to you. Uh, now the big announcement. Uh, next year, we're going to Numea. Where are we going the year after? So it's kind of getting, we'll go to Kathmandu, then we'll go to Numea, then we go to Korea, then we'll go to um, Thailand in Chiang Mai in uh, 2019 for the APNIC uh, 48 uh, meeting. I don't think there is a real picture. <laughs> um, but, you know, it gives you an idea. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be in Chiang Mai. Uh, you can book your tickets uh, or, well, at least start uh, putting this on the calendar. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, there we are. Okay, I think this is a short open mic here uh, where I can take questions on all the three presentations so far, the EC report, the treasurer report, and the secretary report. If not, Are we ready? If not, I would like to request uh, Professor Vincent Chen uh, to come and announce the NRO, uh, well, ASO, AC election results. Thank you. Hello, uh, it's, a, it's a time to announce the result election. And the, uh, I'm very happy to say that the results are here. And the, but before that, I, I am uh, happy to say that no any dispute uh, has been brought up uh, during this uh, election so far. So, uh, and uh, I also would like to uh, call on one of the secretary to make a short comment on the vote uh, account process before I announce the result. So, Ingrid, uh, please. Ingrid, yeah. From uh, RIPE NCC, I was one of the scrutineers, and I can confirm that everything went, um, went perfect. So, I um, support the outcome of the... Okay. So, short uh, comment, and thank you so much. And the, uh, the, the, the envelope is sealed uh, so far, still sealed. <laughs> but, and I will open it and the, uh, and, uh, yes. Even now, I, I don't know the result so far, so, <laughs> yes, okay. And the uh, AP 44, to a 17 uh, appendix uh, in our NC election at uh, the uh, at declaration of the result. Total uh, valid paper votes is uh, 146. And total invalid paper votes is two. And the total uh, uh, paper valid count is 148. Total online uh, on-site votes is uh, 146. Total online votes is uh, 106. So total uh, votes counted uh, 252 votes. And uh, the total vote counts for each nominee. Combine uh, online and on-site votes I just read one by one. And the FTEP Sitka is uh, uh, 126 votes. Tom Tomohiro uh, Fujisaki san is uh, 80 votes. And ja Jahangir uh, Husan, the 37 votes. 
and the ASM uh, Henry Actor uh, Chaudhary was five. And the side uh, uh, Mohammed uh, Najasi the voice is two two. We we let more uh, Kenjin the vote is one, and the Sen Senada Sumro the vote is one. Other two the vote is zero. So total votes uh, counted uh, is uh, two hundred fifty two, and and. Uh, the Romania who is successfully elected into the, the NRONC is a uh, AFTEP uh, city guard. <laughs> congratulations to the AFTEP, congratulations. And so far, we are, uh, I will now hand the result to the APNIC Executive Council Chair, Grab. I just hand uh, off you. and. Uh, uh, just complete the the election so far. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Professor Vincent uh, Chen. Uh, Professor has been a long time contributor to the APNIC uh, community. Uh, I've known him, or I've at least interacted with him with him for almost 15, 16 years ago when uh, I started out here. So thank you for coming back and helping with the critical process, uh, Dr. Chen. Thank you very much. Um, next, uh, congratulations to Aftab. Um, you've been on the AC for a few years. Uh, now you give us more job because now we have to nominate someone. Uh, thank you very much for your contribution uh, and hope you can continue contributing uh, on the AC. I'd also like to thank uh, Tomohiro Fujisaki, who has been on the AC for a long time now. Uh, thank you for being part of the community and hope you continue to contribute uh, and be part of the community going into the future. Thank you very much. Um, I'd also like to commend uh, Jahangir. Uh, thanks for being a candidate and coming and participating. I think this is your first time being at an APNIC meeting. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you more and more, uh, and you contribute to be part of the community. Um, for all the other candidates, uh, I didn't get time to write names, uh, but uh, thank you for being candidate uh, in this very critical process um, in, uh, on the NROAC. Oh, sorry, ASOAC. Uh, having said that, I'm trying to judge what to do. Um, we have a couple of uh, SIG reports to present. Um, and we're going to start with the, because of timing constraint, uh, I'll probably flip if you are looking at the published agenda. Uh, we'll go ahead with uh, the NIR SIG report um, to start with. Sunny, you okay with that? Yes. So we'll go to the NIR SIG report, have the break, or maybe we'll do the NROEC report as well, and then uh, go with the policy SIG and ASA review afterwards. Uh, NIR SIG report, we are looking at Gen U. U Gen? He, uh, Sin Yu is the newly elected co-chair, so congratulations to him, and welcome to the APNIC, uh, being an APNIC SIG uh, co-chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Zhen Yu, co-chair of NRSIG. Uh, because NRSIG chair Shem was able to participate, so I will give the NRSIG report. Uh, an NRC session was held in the afternoon of September 12th. About 60, 60, uh, seven people attended this session. Uh, before, uh, before the update, APNIC Secretariat conducted the co-chair election. Zheng Yu got the support and was appointed as co-chair 
for the next two years. Then all the uh, NRs give their updates. Jin and Jiwei give their scenic update, shared up-to-date data uh, about the inter internet development in China, members' IP and S allocations status, scenic IP annual conference, and the RPKI in scenic. Scenic IP Alliance conference was held on, on June 13th in Kunming. Guangliang Pan was uh, invited to uh, give, a, give a presentation about the uh, IPv, IPv4, IPv6, and uh, SN delegation policies and the practice in uh, uh, every IR regions. And George Maxson gave an update on global IPv6 deployment trends. APNIC training officer Jessica Wei and Ming Lei conducted a wonderful IPv6 workshop in Chinese. And CINIC launched its uh, RPK service uh, in the conference. San Yun gave the Kianic update. He shared the statistic about the members' IP and ASN allocation. Kianic has done a, a serious effective work in the past half years. Half year included improving the accuracy of IP hoids, regularly check the accurate usage of IP at SN, deploying DNS stack, analyzing DNS, uh, DNS traffic and uh, held Asia Pacific Internet Governance Academy 2017. OIN updated a uh, Vinix activity activities, internet resource management and uh, deployment, Venom IPv6 measurement and upcoming activities. In 2017, VNIC hosted Apricot 2017 and APTLD71, held IP member meeting and the VNIC snog, did a series IPv6 promotion such as IPv6 day uh, trainings and uh, IPv6 ready. Owen shared the, uh, the IPv6 de deployment in Venom. Yang Jie gave the TDONIC update. It covered the stat statistic of TDONIC's IP members, IPv4 and IPv6 allocation TWNIC's activities, training program, and future works. TWNIC held 2017 TWNOC and 28th uh, TWNIC IPOPM. In 2017, uh, TWNIC has uh, conducted 10 IPv6 trainings. The total attendees is more than 350. And also, Yang Jie introduced Taiwan IPv6 deployment in the government public Wi-Fi service called iTaiwan. It's a good way to provide IPv6 access to the end users. Uh, it is uh, estimated nearly 73% of the hotspots uh, will support IPv6 this year. It's very impressive. And uh, uh, Hierarchy gives the GPNIC update. He intro introduced the activities and the st statistics of GPNIC. GPNIC did much work on DNSSEC KSK rollover, RPKI promotion, and the IPv6 training, and so on. GPNIC open policy meeting was held on June 21st. Also, Hierarchy shared the data about the members' resource holder and resource distribution and the IPv and IPv4 SN market transfer. Uh, Benjamin gave a presentation for uh, Edinic update. He shared the data about the members and the resource allocation, the status of the Indonesia Internet Exchange Point. A training program, 
He also shares IPv6 test results in a mobile uh, broadband operator in Indonesia. Finally, he, he introduced uh, MyIDNIC, Indonesia Network Information Center's IP portal. And uh, Brajesh gave the last presentation for Aaron update. He shared the status of the Aaron members, IP and the SN delegation. And uh, this is a photo of uh, the uh, our speakers. Okay, that's all I want to report. Uh, you can download the slide for the specific details. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and once again, congratulations on being elected the uh, uh, co-chair of the NIRC. Thank you. Uh, we'll now next move on. Uh, I'll go to the NROEC report by Paul Wilson. Hello again. This is a report that's uh, normally delivered by the chair of the NRO, um, but I'll have to continue the monotony here because the chair, John Curran, isn't, isn't available, so I'm stepping in for him. Uh, the NRO, uh, the mission to be the flagship and global leader for collaborative internet governance resource management as a central element of an open, stable and secure internet. So what is the NRO? Just very briefly, it's uh, an organisation, informal, uh, formed by an MOU amongst the RIRs. The mission is basically to coordinate the RIR system and undertake joint activities. So whatever the RIRs might need to do, that we all need to do together is generally done in the name of the NRO. It's pretty simple, really. Um, it's this ASO thing around it that tends to make things uh, seem a bit complicated, as we've heard a fair bit uh, this, uh, this week. But one of the joint activities of the NRO, amongst a whole lot of others, is that we fulfil the role of the ICANN ASO. So you can find out more about the NRO as on uh, www.nro.net. The executive committee of the NRO is simply the five RAR CEOs. The chair this year, John Curran from Aaron. Uh, I'm the vice chair and secretary this year. Uh, Alan Barrett from Afronic is the treasurer. Axel and Oscar are two other members of the NRO EC. The secretariat is hosted by AP Nick. So Herman Valdez is our exec executive secretary, uh, assisted by Susanna Gray. Uh, I mentioned before a number of the coordination groups for the NRO that APNIC participates in. So yes, all of the RARs participate in these coordination groups to keep our activities, uh, our joint activities running properly and well. There are a few publications on the NRO website. There are joint uh, internet number statistics, uh, a joint status report updated quarterly. There is a comparative policy overview. So anyone who really wants to delve into policy matters and comparison of policies at different RARs can look at this friendly matrix that gives you uh, all of the RARs uh, set side by side. The other area that you can find information is on the ASO website, which is under ICANN, uh, aso.ican.org. The um, finances of the NRO come from contributions from all of the RIRs. So the NRO has got quite a few expenses and we share those expenses among the RIRs. We don't share them equally, we share them in proportion with, sort of in proportion with capacity to pay actually, but uh, the formula that you, that you see there that has AP Nick paying or responsible for 23.6% of NRO expenses comes from a formula uh, related to IPv4 address holdings and total annual budget of each of the RIRs. So we feel that is a fair way to, to distribute the cost of the NRO. Uh, general operations expenses come to uh, 331,000 US in uh, 2016. That includes things like contributions to the IGF and other events. It includes travel that is contributed to some of the committees and the staff, etc. But on top of that, we have a joint contribution of 823,000 US dollars per year to, to ICANN. We have, uh, in name, we have a stability fund, that is, uh, all of the RIRs have made provisions within our own finances to uh, support the RIR system in case it's needed. Uh, we made an announcement of the fact that the RIRs have, have, set, have earmarked uh, $2.1 million uh, in case of any kind of financial stability problems within the uh, RIR system. 
The IANA transition was something we spoke about a lot for the last couple of years, you might remember. Um, the uh, transition is fully uh, completed now. Uh, the achievements, the final achievements of that uh, transition were the new service level agreement between uh, RI, the RIRs and ICANN, in fact, for the provision of uh, uh, IANA services. Those services being provided these days by the PTI, used to be called the post-transition IANA, it's now called Public Technical Identifiers. That was all signed off uh, last year and it's now fully in motion and working. We've got something called the uh, Numbering Services Review Committee, which is quite closely related to the ASO Address Council in that it has many of the same members. Uh, but the point of that review committee is to just make sure that the IANA PTI services are being prov provided to the right uh, level as expected by the RARs. And so here are the, the review committee members. And as you see from APNIC, uh, Brajesh and Tomohiro have been the members in 2017 on account of their positions on the address council. The appointed member of the review committee, however, comes from APNIC staff and uh, the EC has appointed George Quo, the, the services director of APNIC as the staff representative of the review committee. So it's, it's pretty sensible you'd understand to have a staff member sitting on that committee because this review of IANA performance is all about whether or not IANA is providing, in APNIC's case, the right services as expected to APNIC. And George is the one, of course, who's the recipient of most of those services directly in his area. ICANN accountability is something that is a, a question that came up during IANA transition and, and it continues with a so-called cross-community working group on accountability. Now, cross-community means that a lot of different uh, uh, stakeholders within the ICANN system sit on that committee, on that working group, and so the numbers community have representatives as well, one from each RAR. So once again, uh, Izumi Okutani deserves thanks for coming back uh, yet again uh, into the fray and, uh, and helping out to represent the APNIC community in this particular exercise. So she's alongside colleagues from four other RIRs. They are working now on Workstream 2 of ICANN's accountability work. Uh, Workstream 1 was a bunch of accountability measures that were achieved prior to the IANA transition. Workstream 2 uh, measures uh, to improve uh, ICANN accountability or to review and, and improve, if needed, ICANN accountability after the transition. Something else that came up through the transition, and this is uh, something that results from the ICANN bylaws which have been uh, revised, they've been changed post-transition to actually give considerably more power to the combined global ICANN community uh, in doing all sorts of things like approving changes to ICANN bylaws, in even uh, removing directors of ICANN, etc. These are things which the community is now empowered to do. Before we didn't have those powers, but, but now we do. And uh, so we, uh, they're important powers actually, and so the, the numbering community really is obliged to participate. We have, we have both the opportunity and also an obligation, I suppose, to participate in this empowered community process. So the ASO has had to implement procedures for um, empowered community approval, uh, rejection actions, actions related to direct re re uh, removal, et cetera. Um, that was a bit of work that had to be done this year. It's all, it's all been done so that we can participate as we've always wanted to do in, uh, in um, ICANN's uh, oversight, I suppose. RAR accountability. Now, ICANN had a lot of uh, attention to its accountability over the last several years. We felt it was um, uh, only natural for the RARs to also uh, put ourselves under the same sort of spotlight, I suppose, of, um, of accountability to make sure that people have confidence from outside of our community in our accountability. Uh, there's a governance matrix on the NRO website, which is like the policy matrix. It's a comparison of all the different governance mechanisms across the five RARs, uh, bylaws, policy development, dispute resolution, data protection, blah, 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 the whole, the whole range. So if you want to see how the RIR's accountability works and to compare the RIR's, you can see that there. There's an FAQ about that. There was also an independent legal assessment of our accountability that, uh, that was conducted and is also available on the uh, NRO website. The ASO review, this is something where we had a, a special session uh, this week because the ASO review has just been uh, completed. The timetable is that uh, the, having completed the review, 
the RARs uh, all together uh, need to work out what we are going to do with the review. That is, the review contains a bunch of recommendations. We need to work out uh, whether we're going to accept those recommendations, if so and how. And that, that process started this week with APNIC's first session on the review. We'll hear a bit more about that uh, later on today. Just a couple of things on, on technical projects. Something rather important is a re-architecture or a rearrangement of our uh, trust anchor arrangements for the RPKI services. I won't go into that here and now. Uh, it was reported uh, earlier in this week. Uh, but the NRO announced that the RARs would be uh, completing this work by the 30th of September. Unfortunately, uh, from APNIC's point of view, we're one RIR which isn't quite going to make that deadline. We've had a couple of, uh, of glitches in our processes and it's going to take us a little bit longer to transition to the uh, new uh, trust anchor arrangements. If you want to know what all of that means, then I'd suggest to take a look at the um, webcast archive of the session uh, that we had uh, on that in the APNIC services session. Uh, we've been working with the, on uh, PTI uh, reporting requirements. That's part of the IANA SLA and the, the review committee. Uh, we've been also working with ICANN with the, across the RARs on the Internet Identifier uh, Technology Health Indicators uh, with Alan Durand, who's, uh, who's here in the room and reported about that, uh, and an all-exciting uh, oh, sorry, NRO website revamp. Uh, that's all from the NRO. Thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions uh, anytime. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Um, on the NRO report, um, I think like uh, all of you, I sometimes get confused by the acronyms uh, that are in our industry, um, especially when it's around ICANN. Uh, they're pretty good at creating new ones and then adopting them for something else. Good example is PTI. Um, Post-transit and I have become something else. Uh, still can't get that into my head. Um, so follow up, quick one, uh, as Paul mentioned, we had the ASO review done, the second ASO review, and uh, we had a session yesterday about it. Um, so there is a short, really short presentation uh, that uh, Sumon has prepared based on that session. Uh, so I'd like to just get done with that so that we have the continuity of thought uh, and before we go into the break. Um, I'll let Sumon uh, highlight the discussion um, and Hopefully, some of the things that come out of, uh, you know, some more. Yep. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Anyway, before the slides come up, uh, we have yesterday have a ASO review consultation meeting. It's basically. Uh, most of you know that uh, the ASO thing should be reviewed every five years, and uh, ITM, uh, so other consultant to review the process, and they have a report already in the website. And uh, there is a, I think there are 18 recommendations, and uh, among them, 17 are mostly should be implemented by the NRO and ASOAC, but one need to be consulted publicly. Oh yeah, the report is already here. So. So first independent review in 2011 or 12? I think it's probably first review in 12, right? 12. Yeah, it's 12. 12. And uh, second uh, independent review done in 2017, conducted by ITEMS International. And uh, it includes 18 recommendations. Among them, uh, the 18 that NRO should initiate a public consultation involving the five RIR communities to determine the future structure of the ASO. And uh, based on that, we have a consultation yesterday, and uh, there's a uh, one or 30 minutes seems not enough to conclude the discussion. There's a long discussion, a lot of ideas and thought came up. Then eventually, <clears throat> uh, and of course, uh, before the consultation, there is some uh, input from the APNIC EC as well, that, uh, that uh, the present numbering committee already mentioned that uh, uh, there's a confusion on ASOAC, NROEC, and the name. And uh, in response to the review report that APNIC proposes to consider a non-status quo option, taking into account all current aspects of the relationship with RIRs and ICANN. 
And uh, as long as we couldn't conclude the discussion, it has been proposed to form a working group to continue the discussion about this review process. And uh, uh, the name of Aftab, Siddiqui, and Izumi continues proposed, and they both agreed to act as a co-chair for the working group. So all we can provide input to the, and they will continue the discussion, and that the recommendation from the review report for future structure of the ASO and NRO with reference to the APNKC recommendation for non-status solutions. And the work group will start the community consultation process and revert back to the community. So the process will be moved forward with the Aftab and Izumi. And we all can provide input. And I think we have second consultation probably will be in Apricot in Kathmandu. And that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. Um, I think um, this, uh, well, the, the ASO review discussion yesterday was uh, quite intense, and so thanks for sharing that, Simone. Um, I would actually like to uh, get if there is any questions or any feedback from the membership and the community about the formation of the working group. Uh, if not, then the EC will uh, make a decision to charter the working group and appoint the co-chairs uh, so that they can continue with the um, discussion. Um, I think the idea would be to charter the working group, open it up for mailing list discussion, solicit inputs, and then do a second round of consultation in Kathmandu before we start looking at future. And hopefully, you know, other RIRs can take the queue and start their own consultation processes so that by the end of the, you know, all the consultations we have a, a you know, proposed new structure hopefully with fewer acronyms uh, that are easier to remember. Um, any other feedback? If not, I would like to request you to proclaim this working group by, by acclamation. I was looking at our legal counsel to see if he has anything to add to this, but if not anything, then let's proclaim the working group. Uh, the EC will uh, charter this as Sumon pro presented earlier. Anyone? And thank you to uh, Aftab and Izumi uh, for taking on the co-chair roles. Uh, now, having said that, we'll have a tea break, 27 minutes, and then we'll be back here uh, at 4 o'clock uh, for the remaining SIG reports and conclusion of the session. Thank you very much. <laughs>